Welcome to the Liquid Force Drop Talk Podcast. I am your host, Tom Fouché, the original king of the cable. Join me as I dig up untold stories, debunk myths, and discuss hot topics in the sport of wake with LF athletes and industry icons of the past and the present throughout our 25-year saga. This is our take on wake. I don't know how it, how it happened, but both Liquid and Jet Pilot have done everything I ask for for no reason. Like, they could have said it was a bad idea and just moved on. But, like, both of them would just, they're like, okay, board shorts that are pants. Let's do it. Like, and fully push these things out. And not only pushed them out, but, like, promoted it heavy. I am super fired up about today's guest. He is a longtime friend of mine. He is also a co-worker, the director of Liquid Forest Films, and he is who I would refer to as the minister of style, Shane Danger Bonifay. This guy has done it all. Everything from filming, producing, both in front of the lens and behind it, insane epic video parts, winning pro tour stops in his time, and of course throughout his entire career doing never done before tricks. Shane is a master of both boat and cable and of course the most entertaining guy to ever have with you on the road. So let's dig into it and hear what everything Shane is all about. All right, welcome Shane Bonifay, episode two, which really you're our first uh, actual real guest, man. So thank you for being coming out and being a part of uh, the Liquid Force Drop Talk. Oh yeah, man, happy to be here. Happy yeah, to absolutely, man. Well, hey, first off, before we even get into anything, man, I don't even know uh, if a lot of the public knows this, but uh, if you don't mind me being the first to say it, man, congrats on uh, the engagement, man. That's a that's a major step in life. Oh yeah, thank you, man. Super Super happy. Yeah, you, yeah, you got a good one there, man. I'm pretty, uh, pretty excited to see uh, how everything turns out with you guys. And uh, the one little piece of advice I'm going to give you, man, is, is uh, since I know both you guys have uh, a bloodhound named Blood, uh, I'm going to tell you this: dogs are the gateway drugs to kids. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> well, well uh, we were just actually over at uh, Danny Harp's house last night, and um, we were hanging out with him, and he just had a baby that was, it's like a week old that we were hanging with, and I mean, I even got it a little bit. I was like, this thing's so adorable. Yeah, man. I, I just saw that too. That's pretty, uh, pretty rad too. So congrats to Danny out there too. But, um, Hey man, so, so basically we are going to start and end each one of these podcasts in a, in a segment that we call let the truth be told. And, uh, don't worry, man, you're going to have your chance with this at the end, but basically our previous guest uh, shares a story, um, about the current guest, i.e. you. And, uh, and basically, you know, we always know there's two sides to a story. So, so it's uh, it's pretty exciting, yeah, pretty awesome to to be able to share it with you and then hear your take on it. But um, you know, uh, what's what's really interesting too is like on the last uh, episode that we had, you know, the cheers to twenty five years, we had both Jimmy and Tony telling the whole story of Liquid Force and everything, you know, and essentially the history of Wake. Well, um, Jimmy had told us a story. Actually, there's two of them, but you know, one the first one I'd like to bring up was the one that you were uh, present for the. Uh, uh, the one where you got to to actually be there to glass uh, your very first ever pro model, and and how old were you again at, when you got the mini squirt? Um, <clears throat> I think I would have been probably about thirteen, maybe fourteen. Wow, I, I mean, yeah, because I mean, I would have started riding when I was eleven. And I mean, I signed with Liquid about a year and a half after I did that. So I mean, shortly after. I mean, I want to say I was probably 14, 13 or 14. Man. So do we know if that's the youngest to have a pro model in Wake? I mean, it definitely was at the time, but I doubt it now. Like, I mean, I don't know. I really feel like if there's only one person that might be able to compete compare with that or compete with that it would be it'd be the frog phil that would be maybe it but uh aside from that man either way back in the uh back in the 90s that's pretty pretty heavy but um yeah so what was uh dan grant like he uh, would have had one well if we if we want to talk he's had, like the tail 10 years of towel so if he's had that for 10 years how old is he uh, I think Dan is now 23. Now, 
Yeah, that's if we go Wakescape, man. If we want to get real technical, you can definitely hold on to the uh, to that to that one because yeah. yours is a wakeboard. But but it was really cool. So yeah, like Jimmy was sitting there telling us, you know, and he had a picture of it. Well, um, as I was talking to him more about it, he uh, he was basically telling me, and I, I don't know if you've kind of. Um, notice this or not, but basically your graphics throughout your entire legacy that you've had here with Liquid Forest have basically been a timeline of what you've been into in your life. Like Jimmy had kind of shown it to me, you know, from everything from like, obviously we know, uh, the graphic on the subject, man, that was kind of like the, the intro, not necessarily the introduction, whatever pointless, but it definitely covered, you know, the street, the street signs, you know what I'm talking about, where you meet yeah, the, yeah. the intersection of incomplete and pointless, you yeah, know, and, and that- that was actually a buddy of mine out in uh, Salt Lake City that helped with that graphic too. I think gave the outlines and did the, he was standing on the corner of pointless and incomplete. One of my favorite graphics, man. And if that isn't like, man, that's pretty, pretty rad to be, uh, to get something that personal with it too. But you know, it's like, you kind of keep going on and, um, you know, like I really liked, and I thought it was major, major stepping stone for wake in general, not only your graphic, but the year that you had, um, the first, well, really the first closed toe binding and, uh, you know, that frame, the, the all whiteboard with the little, uh, picture frame in it, man, the inlay. Yeah. I, I thought that was pretty unreal and that really changed, uh, a lot at the well, time. That, that, that one was cool too. Cause I was like, we were shooting out of pal so much and it was like, we do the catalog stuff and we had so many good photos from there and we were just using them for catalog and for ads. But it was like, I mean, we shot for, you know, we and a half or however long we were out at PAL but there was so many that I was like let's just like have runs of boards where it was like every you know 100 boards 150 boards we just swapped the graphics we changed the placement on where the frame went and Jimmy even had like a tool that would like scoop out where the frame was going to go so then it was like a magnet that would go in the press yeah and he could move that around like it had to be in between the boots but you could have it vertical you could have it horizontal and you can move it up and down and it was it was really cool because it was like and it was like pictures of me like <laughs> that's yeah, of it was also funny too so it was like not only were they like cool sh- and that was like uh i think that was letchworth that did most of those photos and it was like um yeah most of them were of pow or of different things but like there was just there'd just be random photos of me and they're like you would get a wakeboard <laughs> with me wakeboarding on it <laughs> like very cocky but it was pretty funny i, I liked that though yeah i mean that was uh wasn't that the entire bottom graphic of that board <laughs> What? Oh yeah, no. There was like it was like a collage of gra- pictures on the bottom, but and then there was like and then the ma- regular main one in the in the on the top sheet. Yeah, yeah, dude. I, I I mean, just in general though, man, that was one of my favorite um, favorite setups, if not like the in the entire like history of Wake, man. And I just not to mention that the impact that obviously pairing it up with that uh, with you know our first closed toe binding and the one that really moved everybody to that direction. So uh, I. Think I think I think uh, that just kind of goes to show, man, like all the innovation that you've brought throughout throughout your time, man, is pretty, pretty amazing. But but yeah, like getting back into what Jimmy is saying, it like, you know, your graphics almost tell a, a timeline of like your story and like what you were into, because I know you obviously you've had some, uh, you know, some some hip hop influence on some of your yeah. graphics. Well, and, and I, so on. I, I wasn't uh, too scared of having some like pretty ridiculous graphics as long as it was sort of what I wanted at the time. And you can even ask Jimmy, like he, some of my graphics were like definitely not the best sellers on the, <laughs> like nobody, more people were buying my board because of the board, not the graphic. Like, hey, and man. Then, I- then there was a niche market that was like, no, I'm super into hip hop and I love the DJ or I love the B-boy, whatever, like all of those different ones. Exactly. And, and one of the other cooler ones that we did too, which was the subject was the Blaine Fontaine which is like the artist that did he did the trip or he did the um, not the trips but he did Greg's board yeah the balance did mines. yeah that's right but, man but those were like that artist blew up like just a few years after and it was like I remember trying to find that graphic again or even try to find the painting and you can't get like Blaine Fontaine like art 
it's like hard. Like he, he really blew up pretty big. Well, Hey man, I think that's what we've always come to expect with you, man. Ahead of your time. <laughs> that's for <laughs> sure. Thanks. Well, speak, speaking, I guess, uh, ahead of your time or whatever. So what, like, man, let's, uh, go ahead and lay it out to me. What all is happening What in your life right now? Like, what are you up to? I know, obviously, uh, I think hopefully well, the world is getting to see what you're doing with liquid forest right now. So yeah, as of right now, I am uh, the in-house filmer and editor for liquid force, which is uh, pretty awesome. Like just getting to still travel with everybody, still get to do what I've always been doing just behind the lens now and not yeah. so much in front of it, but uh, it's really cool. And then in just the last week we've released uh, the, the who is Finn Bullock at it, which I'm super stoked with. We were shooting that basically all summer, and uh, I'm I'm really happy with that one. But we've had a lot of fun projects and just doing a lot of the video stuff for Liquid now. So yeah, man, and I obviously I think uh, I think we've always known that's been uh, that's been a niche of yours. But man, I I got to give you props too on the uh, the who is Finn edit because that one was a, that one was a home run, man. I mean, of course. Uh, the McConaughey at the beginning and then obviously all yeah. the different scenes with Finn in there so good man so it's like yeah it's well, like, well props also go out to Bob Sullivan because he's sort of my right hand man when it comes to some of that uh, the creativity on that and, co-director and he was the one that found uh, McConaughey <laughs> um, voiceover sound alike guy and but putting it all together me and him really like collab and come up with some some funny ideas well I mean like I said well, well done to both you guys and, and of course Finn too because to me the, the edit checked all the boxes like obviously the writing was insane but to come up with uh, what you guys did um you know, as the intro of it and everything. And then of course to execute it as well as it did, man. Like, that's why I say it was like the combo of all three of you guys was, uh, was definitely yeah. a home run. So yeah, no, I, I was, I was really pumped on it. And what was cool about that too, is like Finn's writing is like, so, so powerful and like, like strong, like he's this young kid, but he's doing some really heavy hammers and, you know, he wanted to ride to that, like this, like, um, Blue Footed Boobies song, which is like, you know, really hard rock or whatever. And just to have the opposite of like this, you know, Lincoln commercial wannabe, you know, like <laughs> yeah. soft sounding like intro to go right into that. Like I was, I was happy with the way it, uh, with. Yeah, abs- man, right there with you, man. It it, it hit pretty uh, hit hit on all cylinders, that's for sure. So, um, yeah, man. So I'm I'm gonna take a little bit of break from that real quick. So we we have another thing that we kind of came up with a little bit of uh, liquid force word association. So basically, I mean, it's pretty self explanatory. You know, I'm gonna throw out some words with an S, maybe possibly two, uh, and you you just kind of tell me. I just want to know, and this is definitely biased towards you but like what's what's the first thing that comes to mind so i'm gonna go ahead and start with the first one leather vest uh, the leather vest <laughs> is uh that was that's bro stock for sure like uh i was in my leather jacket wearing phase and just sort of re- like i read the motley crew book and uh was really into my my you know getting having some Jack Daniels and getting pretty <laughs> loose and wild out there. So and so one of the guys that I, I forget who it was, but at the at the bro stock, literally had this vest that with an American flag on the back of it and. I, I I think I went up to him and I was like, that's the best vest I've ever seen. I got to have it. And I think I put it on for a few minutes and he never got it back. And I wore it for the next like five or six years that bro stuff. Oh, I was going to say, man, I think it was, it was a staple with you, man. So that's, that's for sure. And actually I'm going to go ahead and lead it. Cause I know this will continue into, to that story. I'll break into it, but, uh, uh, let me just go ahead and go word the next set of word association and it's going to be all white. Oh yeah, those would be those would be my pants that I was wearing matching with the leather vest. <laughs> or the all white, all the all white could also be my what we were just talking about the board and the boots combo because those were white on whites too. But ah, there you go. White, all white was uh 
an all white party that we actually went to where you just had to wear everything all white and we went to that like the few days before bro stock like while we were sort of setting up and I ended up wearing the pants for a few days and then wore them for a few days more and then ended up wakeboarding <laughs> in them and those also became a bro stock staple well now correct me if I'm wrong man because this is like as far as like we just want to talk about the riding of bro stock now obviously there's a bazillion like party stories but I want to talk about the riding of bro stock like one of my top three favorite things I've ever seen and I believe this was the same year you could you could I definitely need you to correct me on it but I know for sure at least there was a leather vest worn when you did that toe grab tail grab toe back five off the double up band were I were you wearing yeah, those yeah, all white? white yeah all white <laughs> pants all white pants and the leather vest oh and, man and the, and the pants were like so tight that I actually had to put my <laughs> knee brace on top of it too. I remember like, that kind of fit underneath it <laughs> and and I mean at that point too it's like I, I I mean I've been pretty good at double ups but I've never been like with the people that were in the event that year I definitely didn't think I was gonna win anything or go very far so I was like let's just go put on a show and try to make at least one good trick and I think I uh, checked all of those boxes I think I put on the show and I made that one good trick so oh, hands I, down oh, I mean you and know, that was really one of my favorite tri- that was the favorite my favorite trick I've ever done at Brostock too so I'm glad that you remembered that oh, well hands down man I think you, I think uh, three quarters of the trick was just that grab you know know he held it forever so you know yeah. that's that's why another reason why it stands out but but to me so so i remember that that one your heat or whatever but to me you know in in in, in the light of bro stock like literally just wearing that vest and those all and the and the white pants that should have advanced you to the next round whether you hit a double up or not you would think so <laughs> you know i mean i i, I just I mean, saying it's, i wasn't i wasn't i wasn't wearing them just for my own comfort they were they were they was for style and for points there too. For yeah, sure. you know, built for speed or built for comfort, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that definitely, I, I, it's just, I, I will never forget though, man, definitely without a doubt that as far as the riding goes, that's oh, a top stoked. three for I made, me. I made it clean and I like, r- like I, I remember riding away from it being like, I don't, did I do a five <laughs> there? I was like, one, two, three. Yeah, I'm left on four. That was a five. Yeah, I made it. And I was like super stoked to like, it was a good one. Oh, My for best sure. Trick at, well, best trick at Bros Dog for sure. You know, the whole, the whole circle of both so, you know, going around the place, they were going nuts. Like as soon as you went off the dock, just for the get up. But you know, you you had you had the core guys and all of us on the little floating barge, like going nuts after that. So you know, just as you just said, man, it it, it kind of uh, it kind of hit on all cylinders with that one. So um, yeah, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue on my last little word association, man. This one's probably a little bit more uh, even more personal, but Jessica Rabbit. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Big fan of Jessica Rabbit, always been. <laughs> I, I uh, believe you got a tattoo, right? Yeah, I do. I have a little Jessica Rabbit tattoo on my hip. And and I was gonna say, I know, I know, I know at least. She's, and she's actually right next to Princess Leia, so there's like the Princess Leia Jessica Rabbit, like sort of like the homage to the girls that whenever I was, you know, probably thirteen, that I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame you. That's for sure. Yeah. I, I've dressed up as Luke Skywalker my fair share of times for, uh, for hey, Halloween, you, so you I feel you. You actually look just like Luke Skywalker. I've seen the side-by-side comparison, and it is uncanny, my friend. You uh, really, <laughs> really did a good Skywalker there. Well, uh, we are like on the double eve of Halloween, man, so uh, it might have to be my my go-to here and, hey, uh, and, and two nights, you know. It's a, a good one. I mean, as long as you still have that nice little bowl cut or whatever <laughs> it was. Like, yeah, hey, we, can, we can shape it, that's for sure. But, you know, you know, Halloween's on a, on a full moon, man, so, you know, it, it, the, the character is going to fully come out if so. Oh, yeah. As, as anybody that dresses like a character should embody the character that they're dressing as and not just just go as himself dressed as the person like I think right. you should really really go for it oh for sure you know if you're gonna if you're gonna dress up like Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's you know you gotta be doing the Bernie all night well like one of my favorite costumes was um it was the the hot dog vendor at a sports game 
Mm. Like the guy <laughs> that would walk through the stands and be like, hot dogs, yeah, cold beers. Throw out a beer, and yeah. I would have like a tray of just hot dogs and beers and like, you know, popcorn and candy and stuff like that. But like a full tray. And I had like my little like a fanny pack with all my change nice. in it. And it was seriously like, I don't think I ever broke character because I would be in the middle of conversations with somebody. They'd be talking and I'd just be like, cold beers, cold beers, got your cold <laughs> beers, ice cold beers over here. And like just throwing hot dogs around or whatever. Like, and you would make a buck or two. Like, I had some Slim Jims. You'd, you'd sell a few things on there as long as you kept your tray full. Right. I was going to say, you, you probably not only made tips, but like, you know how it is after when, you know, when everybody's having, everybody's partying and the wee hours, everyone gets hungry. So obviously the person with food yeah. is like the hero of the night. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I had that like, one. I had like six or seven hot dogs and popcorn <laughs> on there. So everybody was definitely. All right, man. I think I think my next Halloween party uh, come come next year. Hopefully, when we're all able to do this, you're 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 first up on the list. <laughs> oh, or, man, actually, yeah. I don't even know why it has to be a Halloween party. It was just party period, man. I mean, everybody everybody who knows Shane already knows he's your guy. I would love I would love just to show up to a party, <laughs> or you, you show up somewhere and you're just like, yeah, no, I'm just like uh, the hot dog guy. Like you know, no reason to dress like them, but you're still wearing like the the team shirt and the team hat. Or, you know, <laughs> right. you're like, you, you got cargo shorts on and some Crocs or something because it's, you know, you got to be able to walk around all day. <laughs> true that, true that, man. The man knows his comfortability right there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Well, so, so I gotta, I gotta kind of tie back into, uh, I did want to ask you a little bit more about like what you're doing with film and stuff. So, so last year we, you released, uh, the, who is Sam Brown in it, which to me again, like I thought that was kind of like one of the, uh, that was like your, your first big home run with, with LF man. Like, yeah, well we did, we did do a few other ones, but I felt like that was the, probably the first home run too. Like we did, uh, we did a thing with Luca, I, and then I did one with uh, Gunther where I followed him to Moomba. That's right. But he, he didn't even, like, we were doing this whole training for Moomba and, like, what it's like for a rider to get ready for an event and then go all the way to Australia and then win the event. But he didn't even win. <laughs> like, and so, like, the whole project just fell off Wait, in the last, like, Gunther hour doesn't, that we were shooting. Gunther like, doesn't win? It usually does. That. That's why. That's why I put all my eggs in that basket, and I was like, "Let's film this whole thing like a month out, and then you're going to go there, and I don't doubt that you're going to win." And he was like, "All right, we'll try." And yeah, I think you got third or something like that. Or, but wow. like th- those were fun projects. But yeah, like the Sam Brown, I think was the first, the first sort of bad, the first home run, and that was the one where it was like sort of not my baby but it was like I really wanted to do a good solid classic just wakeboard section and have like you know classic little intro and that was even Bob helping me that was like Bob helping me too and we were sort of saying like it's not when you just watch a random section on Instagram or on YouTube now it doesn't hold any weight like the old 12 honkies stuff where there's like a little bit of acting or there's like a little bit of there's just some more movement before the section starts to sort of give you an idea on what's going on and that's where we've sort of come up with that who is series where it's like let's just do you know a minute long intro to these guys shredding but yeah for Finn Finn and for Sam it's really easy because those dudes are such good riders it's almost out of my hands as long as I'm pushing the record button you know right and like man I, I would just say too I mean I know both Finn and Sam are like the same rider in the sense of all you got to do is put a camera on them and you know you're going to get some some really good quality riding so um yeah uh, both of those both those guys and at the same time though they're like almost they're almost completely two different riders like they don't do they don't look the same out there obviously doing uh completely different tricks and of course sam like uh, grabs everything super wild yeah it, they're both rad. equally as good in two opposite aspects like yes it's, it's crazy like both, both of them are ser- like amazing riders like 
fucking awesome riding from yeah. both of them. It's really cool. So where did you get the idea? What I want to know is, is what, cause this was so, this was like, again, one of my favorite parts and why I thought like, you know, this really was like the, the big, like, Hey, look what amazing work Shane can do with LF. Like the, the intro to it, you know, where it's like, so everybody says something and right when that last word comes up, it goes to the next person. Um, where did, man, I'm yeah, kind of curious where you got that idea from because that was pretty clever. That's, that's actually, um, stolen from Austin Powers. Oh my gosh, dude. I know which, I know exactly which you part know you're where talking it's about. Like, they're like looking at the spaceship <laughs> yeah. and they're like, oh my God, it's a great big Johnson. It's like, that <laughs> yeah. thing looks just like a hot dog. Like, yeah. so I watched, I remember I watched that or me and Bob were brainstorming and we're like trying to think of like sort of punchlines that we can get across to like make it captivating. And we like came up with a few, but like one led into the other. And I was like, oh my God, like, and the first one was the butter. Like, it was yeah. like we're at a restaurant or we're at a gas station and we're like, let's, it will be like, hey, do you know who he is? And then she rings up. Yeah, that kid's as smooth as butter. <laughs> yeah. And it like goes to them and it's like, but like all of this like came together really good. And that's, I mean, it's, 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 it's a lot of work with me and Bob, like just sort of brainstorming and like coming up with the stuff. And then even like what was harder even with um, spins that we just did is we shot, we knew what we wanted to do. So we shot all the stuff and then we needed to write the script for the voiceover from McConaughey. And like, so we lay everything down on the timeline and then you start sort of organizing this stuff and then you have to now fit words and sentences into how long we have the shots laid right. out. And it was like, became like a little puzzle of like, okay, he can say two sentences about Taekwondo or Jiu Jitsu right here. And he can say a little bit about snowboarding and it's like, turns into this almost like little riddle of jokes that you're trying to make happen along with these other shots so yeah man that's pretty that's pretty rad to see how it how you guys all pieced it together but um man it was it was it was unreal too so I, it sounds to me like a lot more goes into it than like obviously we all originally see you know yeah another it's it's not the who is project but it's uh the the one i did right before the who is from bullock was the lfg yeah yeah oh my the gosh Olympic force girls like that one i was really happy with really excited and i was sort of bummed it got cut short because of the covid stuff because mm -hmm. like so we were in australia and i was planning on going down there for like two weeks and there's you know we had all nine liquid force female athletes down there at the time and some of them were flying in just for that some of them were at a contest that happened the week before some were staying around for a contest that was happening in a few weeks but we got nine girls together and like to do the, the liquid force girls but lfg and i was like all right all right, ladies, like, check this out. What we're doing is we're not making a girl's wakeboard edit. We're making, like, a core, cool, gnarly little wake, like, yes. girl's video. But we're, like, filming it with these, you know, I actually filmed that with uh, the camera that I used for pointless stuff, like, 20 years ago. That's right. Yeah, I brought my VX2000 down there and, like, literally showed them how to use it and I showed them how to use this other little dad cam that Cole gave me yeah. and like we put a fish eye on it and like just I was like okay this is y'all's camera for the next like few weeks and I just want y'all to film some lifestyle stuff and I was like we're also going to be like you know we're going to have some beers we're going to break some bottles we're going to you know have some good b-roll yeah. I want y'all to look tough like full cake smash and you know to some cool stuff and they were all on board like I really was like scared about going down there and asking girls to <laughs> try to look tough because I a lot of them I haven't met like I mean right. I knew I knew four or five of them but I didn't know four or five of them and it was like just meeting him and being like okay so this weird bearded guy that used to wakeboard <laughs> is like filming us now and he's like making us like sort of hang out and party and like just do some crazy shit like and I was like it, it, they were all on board like they were so good they were so cool and I, we're, I'm already talking with Liquid we want to do LFG too 
Yes. Was, you know, another part because that whole trip got cut short. That was only right. a week of riding. Like that whole little section was just a, within a week of which riding. Is which is insane. Like, yeah, I, man, I know. it was unreal. Like the, uh, the riding was pretty good, but like, man, at the same time too, I got to give you and them props because you said it was all, all nine girls. Well, it's, it's nine girls. And I would say probably five to six nationalities. So, uh, the organization one of everybody getting there is tough too. You know, it, 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 look like you and all the girls together mesh so well because the edit man the vibes on it were like they were pretty powerful man it was raw um, yeah. it, just like you said this isn't going to just be some girly edit like this was this was powerful man yeah I wanted it to look like a, you know like a skate video like yes. a Baker video or something like that obviously not as gnarly as Baker but <laughs> something, that was, something in between a girls video and a Baker video is what I was going for and I think we I think they did a really good job and I think we like captured what everybody was doing and they're riding like for sure I mean, yeah like nine girls in like a four minute section was like everybody got like five or six tricks and i was like these gotta be bangers girls right. like i want y'all throwing down i was like i don't want just front boards or 50 50s we're doing your hardest tricks and like I won't say which ones, but I definitely <laughs> made a few of them. Made a few of them cry by just pushing them so hard. But they were pushing themselves. Oh, they were, so they, they were, were like they were, they were they were aggressive in their own sense of just being like, God, I want to make this <laughs> trick. Like they were thankful. Like, they, yeah, believe yeah, me, yeah. we all are. When it comes to a filmer like doing that, like yeah, hundred percent, you got to be thankful for somebody to push you like that too. So uh, that and and man, to me, like I thought the music choice on that too, like really set the tone for it. Uh, yeah. That was all William Clang right there too. He picked that one out while we were down there. I was like throwing out a bunch of different ideas, and I was like, "We're not going with like a girl singer or a girl vo like <laughs> we're like going hardcore." And he found this song, and he was like, "What about this?" And I was like, "Definitely yeah, done. Good on you. Well, uh, that kind of kind of keeps me staying on the same subject, man. Like. I kind of want to hear about how your full introduction into into filming and I guess you'd say producing because I mean, man, I've obviously like been buddies with you for a long time, but always been a fan. Like I've got incomplete on VHS. I've got the mixtape slash double or nothing on DVD. Like these are items that I have watched religiously and know way too much about them, man. So I, I kind of for all my own personalness, like what got you started into filming and I'm assuming it was pointless but like what originally was like you're going to be the guy not your brother or Grub or, or Watson or whoever like what made you decide you were going to um, step up take the well, role yeah like so I mean I think the the excessive the accessibility of it sort of came from like when I was young my mom like she had a ski school and they would film mm -hmm. all of their students and like they'd film all week and then she'd make like a video for them at the end of the week and this was all on VHS stuff like super right. old school like crazy <laughs> crazy big cameras and like classic dad camera style stuff but oh, man. She, would make, she would make videos for the girls like on the last day they're there of all their sets and all the tricks that they learned and like show them so they could take it home and show their family what they mm -hmm. learned while they're down at Boniface Ski School so I realized that at that point it wasn't as hard as it seemed because I saw her do it so much like yep. I mean it's still hard but it's not like you gotta be a major motion picture to make this Whoa. like just a simple little thing dude she She's, if she's filming on VHS and those stuff, actually the process she's got to go through to, to get uh, all this the, done is like 10 times harder than oh yeah, what no, anybody's the doing now. She would go is like, yeah, like literally rewinding tapes like by hand and then like press and play and press and wow. record on another VCR. And like it would take her like all night for like two or three different nights just to make like like three or four little videos for the, the kids and stuff. That's impressive. But, it was it was very impressive. I give her credit. And she actually filmed like all of me and Parks's like baseball games and would make like an end of the end of the season videotape nice. of like all of the players and she'd film she filmed everything, like nonstop. So at that point, like I think that's sort of where I got the the urge to film and do all this stuff. But 
this was also at the same time as like uh, CKY yeah. and like the whiskey videos yeah. and like Metal Militia and things like that. So there was other videos coming out in other sports that I was like, oh, wait, they, they're doing it and looking into it more like what cameras they were using. I was like, this mm-hmm. isn't impossible to do. And me and Francois Roy, old classic Frenchie, <laughs> he was living with me at the time at our ski school. And yeah, I just, uh, I actually won a Vans Triple Crown. I uh, made like 15 grand for winning the Pensacola yeah, Vans Triple Crown and used almost all of that money to buy like a computer and a camera. And Man, that's what a, where it sort of pointless started. What a good investment on life for you right there, man. <laughs> Yeah, it would probably seem a little crazy to my parents to be like, hold on, he just got like 15 grand and we're going to let him spend 12 of it on camera gear and like a computer. And it was like, but they were all gung-ho about it. They let me do it. And right. at that point, it was just like, there wasn't even pointless. It was just, let's start filming everything right. and like seeing what could happen. And we just filmed for years, a few years. And then by the by after like the first year of like, hanging with Danny and hanging with, you know, Rock and having the whole crew around that we had, like, so much good footage of everybody that it just sort of was, like, a no-brainer that we needed to put out a video. And since it was just us that always rode together, we were like, well, it's almost like a crew, like, you know, Red Dragon or yeah, any of these guys. And I was like, let's just make a, make a video. Because there's also in Wakeboard and there's Attention Deficit, which was like Chase Havner and yeah. Matt Staker and those guys. And I was friends with them, but I was like way younger than them. So, but like I watched them sort of playing around with their cameras and the fact that they were doing it too. I was like... We can do it. We're, we can do this. For sure, man. And obviously, like, you and, and obviously the rest of the Pointless Posse was, like, completely completely different style, though, you know, with what you guys did, too. But kind of makes me ask, you know, like, like Incomplete, man, was such a was such a banger for every single person's part from, like, of course, the writing, the song choice, like, the flow to it all. It was unreal. And then Mixtape came out next, man. And I was actually a fan of Mixtape, but it was drastically different different than incomplete you know like, like it was uh i know you yeah, guys that had... was sort of the idea because i mean once we put out incomplete there was like such a hype and the reason why incomplete was so good is because each person like sat with me and we edited their sections so every part of it was what they wanted to show which is at that time not a lot of wakeboard and videos were doing that like you know like 12, it's not like yeah like 12 honkies and ron sign glands and bump films and all of those dudes weren't they weren't bringing riders up to their house to come edit like they would film stuff and then they'd go back home to wherever they're from and then put the video out a few months later but it was like this was one where it was and it was so long in in the making that it was like you could see where your section was like lacking you're like okay I need a I want to get a Pete Rose off of the double up there or I want some (laughs) hits on the rail out of the house in here and everybody's song choice which is definitely probably why we can't even put it up on YouTube is because we use like so many good songs of what everybody wanted to use so the glory years man yeah real glory years <laughs> but then sure. yeah okay so even going into the mixtape part was we already just put out incomplete and that was like awesome and we were still like filming a lot but we like had leftover footage or things that we were filming while that was coming out and it was like let's that wasn't supposed to be just a like a like an easy one that we would put out like every year, every half year. It wasn't supposed to be like the combination of everything, you know, it was like, it was like just like the mixtape was like the, from hip hop, you want to put out an album every, you know, all the time, but you would put out these mixtapes yep. that you would go down to the gas station and you could get the new ludicrous mixtape or you could get whatever <laughs> you could get these mixtapes from what, you know, and it was, was like all of their like it was good stuff but it wasn't their best stuff they're saving right. their best stuff for their album yeah, well, that was sort of the idea the <laughs> it. 
<laughs> yeah, it's freestyles and remixes and things right. like that. So that was the idea of mixtape is like, let's just start this little thing. And I mean, obviously it should have kept going. I wish we would have, but like the mixtape was like just any footage that we had, no certain sections, everybody riding together, good music and whatever was sort of going on at that very time. Not necessarily like yeah, big, big banger. Well, and it actually, so, so this was one, one thing I can't believe I've never asked you that was like a full section of mixtape, but there was a trip that like a large amount of you guys went to Lake Powell and you know, in there you put at uh, thanks Xbox, but never, I, I guess nothing ever came about that other than what you did with there. Like what? No, that's what blacklist. Do you remember the video yeah. blacklist? That, yeah. So that was actually the same trip as blacklist. Ah, okay. But that was what I was filming when they were like, cause there's so many of us out there. They'd be out filming this, you know, filming Randall or filming mm-hmm. whoever was on the trip. And we would be around the house just sort of, you know, either hitting double ups or hitting, doing something in front of the houseboats. And that was that stuff. But we were all out there, not for Blacklist either. We were out there because Xbox was getting ready to come out with a follow up game behind Amp. Ah, okay. The snowboard game. And yeah. they were trying to make a wakeboard game. And it would have, it was going to be like Byerly's wakeboarding game. And they're super stoked on it. And then they saw how, um, like, Murray's game did, I guess, with uh, with Activision the or whatever. Unleash, yeah, and I guess that didn't sell as good as they thought that it was. So that whole the Xbox project got scrapped, and nothing ever came of it. Ah, well, hey, thank goodness you brought your camera with you, man. Yeah, no, we got some stuff. That's pretty rad. That's pretty. I, either way, man, I was always wanting to know that because, you know, that that whole part from mixtape. Um, yeah. Had always made me made me curious because I saw the the yeah the think Xbox in there but you know but yeah I man I I was just a big fan of that because not to mention anyways like the it was just like a montage of uh, of everybody and and there was even a, a small part in there too that wasn't even like completely like wake or wakeboarding you know um, that yeah. I'm assuming that was Francois uh, oh yeah yeah that was actually because Francois was out of the country most of the time when that we were making all of that and he was just back in France so I was like hey give me some either give me some footage or make something for the video and it was just him and his buddy that went wake skating up in that little like little drainage ditch that had like a little river flow under it so yeah I was gonna say he made that so it definitely had that uh like look like it was in Europe I'm gonna go with France look so uh, yeah it was definitely different so for sure but man. my favorite my favorite part of mixtape was uh where I got mocha only from swollen members to yes. rap to the camera Yes, that was pretty but, unreal, man. I, I, yeah, how did that come at, about? We were at Wakestock and Swollen Members was playing, and I was a big fan. So we like, I even think that we took the DJ Rob the Viking and mm-hmm. somebody else wakeboarding that day. But later on that night, they're getting ready to uh, go out on stage. We're like hanging in the green room with them, and. Mocha only turns to like their producer or Rob the Viking I think he was making the beats and he was like hey I got that verse for that new song that we were talking about called Red Dragon and he was like you want to hear it and he was like yeah and I literally had my camera in my hand and I was like do you mind if I film this real quick and he was like yeah no worries and he like turns to the camera and raps the whole song like right uh-huh. to the camera before it ever before it ever even came out wow. so like I, I had the footage and then I remember like three or four months later I found the album or like the song and I was like oh my god like he raps it word for word right into the camera I was like we've got to use this like shot yeah. of him doing this and stuff so yeah, it was really doubt. cool yeah that's something you'd never forget man that's uh that's pretty heavy yeah and there's it's really funny too like you even see like Watson I think it's Watson or Chad in the background like they're like talking to somebody and then they like halfway through the rap realize that I'm like recording and that he's like rapping to me and you see his jaw just sort of drop and he's like oh my god dude that's so sick like you, you see him freak out in the background because he's so stoked he's like no way like, <laughs> yeah I would it's too cool. I would too man but I you know I with that being said too I would I would I mean man you would probably know this better than I would but did did Spolman 
members? Did those guys even know that they were like the soundtrack to wake for like a good like few years? <laughs> I think so. Like when I was, whenever they were doing the wakeboard stuff, I think that they did allude to like the idea that they're like, I mean, I don't know if they knew how much they were used because everybody used it a lot. Like, but they were blowing up huge at that yeah, time too. So for sure. Everybody was using a lot of swollen members stuff. But yeah, I think that they did realize that we were all pretty massive fans. Yeah. Without a doubt, man. I'm pretty sure everybody like that free for all soundtrack was like on everyone's playlist for, for, a minute man that's for yeah. sure for a long time so you know yeah. so I, I kind of I do also want to keep going I want to back it up even further from uh, from your filming days I want to talk about wake pants because you were oh, yeah. the originator about that so so I want you to give me your rundown on that but but with that being said too as we as you explain that I also want to ask you what your take on it now because I, it's like they've kind of reemerged um, but one question own, at a time Tom. <laughs> There we One go. Question at a time. <laughs> I know. Hey, that's a lot. To, uh, that's a lot right there. So yes, how how did you come up with that idea? Again, uh, the wake pants were, and and I'm still proud to say this, but they came from rollerblading. <laughs> yes, I rollerbladed yes. a lot whenever I was like that was like probably like 14, 15, maybe 16-esque. Like, I think once I got my license and I could start driving a lot more, I went, um, no, my mom was calling me on the other line. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, All good, man. No, hold on. I'm just going to decline her. Mama just got bombed. <laughs> uh, um, hey, she's all good. She got her shout out earlier, man. That's where you got your filming inspiration from. Uh, oh, yeah. She knows it. She knows it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like I was I was rollerblading a lot. And once I started driving, I think I switched to skateboarding because I was going to skate parks a lot more. But mm-hmm. at the time, whenever you were rollerblading, you would never rollerblade in shorts. Like it was not cool. Like right. I like, you know, I followed all of the the pro skaters or pro rollerbladers and none of them ever wore shorts no matter how hot it was so I was kind of like man like why don't why do we have to wear shorts like I can wear pants too we just gotta make some <laughs> pants that are out of board short material right. or whatever and literally asked Jet Pilot and Jet Pilot was like Jet Pilot's been the best company like they've li- they like for, I don't know how I, how it happened, but both Liquid and Jet Pilot have done everything I asked for for no reason. Like they could have said it was a bad idea and just moved on, but like both of them were just they're like, okay, board shorts that are pants, let's do it. Like and fully push these things out, and not only pushed them out, but like promoted it heavy and like board pants crushed for them. Like Dude, we killed it with the board pants. They did, man. I, I mean, I won't lie. I was, I mean. Dude, I'm the same age as you, man. I wanted a pair so bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, like, I love, like, even on the back of, like, we had the back cover of one of the wakeboarding mags back then. And oh, I can like, already tell you. Board it's, pants it's from Masters. From Masters. Yeah. Yes, from <laughs> Masters. And I'm wearing a puka shell necklace. I got my giant spoon watch on. Yes. I got board pants. And, like, just, like, I'm, like, I even tell people that I embodied the 90s more than the 90s <laughs> Embodied the nineties. Like right. I like rollerbladed. I had my puka shell. I have baggy jinkos. Mm-hmm. Like I did it all. Like it was. It was my era. Uh, there so. should be. There should be. It's like your photo in the you know in a textbook, man, for the nineties era. <laughs> Just that yeah. ad right there. Yeah, jinkos, puka shells, listening to ska. Yes, rollerblading. It was uh, those 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 were jams, Tom. Those oh, were, you just you just took me back, I Shane. Those days. <laughs> was, I miss those days, man. You, you took me back, man. I didn't even nobody knew what a cell phone was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and if you did, and if you did, it was a Nokia that you played Snake on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, man. That 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 one went pretty hard. You you, you had to have a pretty uh pretty fashionable uh, faceplate on it too. Oh yes, you did. <laughs> you had to have like two or three, so it was like matching. For joke. sure. So so so, what's your take on the wake pants now, man? Because I felt like it's uh it's starting to make it's starting to reemerge. <laughs> Well, I'm a little mixed on it because people bagged on me for 20 years Uh and now they're they're, they're back. People don't seem to be bagging on anybody like the most like people like said it's single handedly the worst um, like 
thing that ever happened in wakeboarding. That's, that's called jealousy. That's called jealousy, man, for sure. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I understand that. Whenever you're on the good side of it, it's jealousy. When you're on the other side of it, it's stupid, you know? So. <laughs> hey, man, I like I said, I wanted a pair, so I was a major fan. But I can I can understand the, the mixed side of it, too, man. Because yeah. But no, I love it. I love this. Like, I could I really could care less on what what if what like I'm not judging anybody that's wearing the wake pants. Like, you know, I did that. I do love <laughs> commenting on photos of people on Instagram and being like, you didn't ask for me for permission. You better take those things off. But hey, man. Like, no, trendsetter. Trendsetter, Shane. And, and actually. Hey, I, I was a trendsetter and a trend quitter because, like, <laughs> I, I stopped wearing the board pants, like, after, like, two years. And they were done. So and that's what I everybody followed. started and stopped a fashion trend. <laughs> Hey, like, I, I think I just like we just said, trendsetter, man. And and that yeah. actually that might even lead me into like I wanted to ask you, what is your favorite and least favorite like current trends in wake? So um, I don't know that that could that might be able to check off both boxes, you know, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, um, I like. OK, so let's say uh, let's start with my favorite trend right now is um, I wasn't a super big fan of the rewind tricks, but I am now. I really do like what everybody's doing now. Like yeah. some of some of that stuff is really good. Like there's there's some. I think my I think one of my more favorite things is just super late one eighties on right. You know, blind one eighties on like whether like some of the tootsie rolls that the kids are doing now. I mm-hmm. love like I absolutely oh, yeah. love it because that's always been a stupid trick too. Like everybody's always hated the tootsie roll and was like. It's got the worst name. It's the easiest, like, mo. And mm-hmm. I was responsible for that too. But now, like people like Mossy and Sam and even Finn got a sick yeah. one. But like the some of their Tootsie rolls are like gangster and they look really cool. But yes. it's like because For- they're like grabbing it the whole time and then going blind at the Well, and it's like a, end, it's like a so. front side shifty through it too when they grab it because it's like really just like you just said, a really late max side uh, yeah. 180. So, so I'm with you on that, man. Yeah, I really like that. Um, I love how much. Uh, uh, I mean, winching's always been a thing, but I feel like there's a, like watching all the space tape stuff. Like I feel like it's picked up even more. And I always, I loved winching and like, but I feel like it's really kicked off. Like I never really thought enough people would be able to do it. Like it's, it's very hard to do. So oh, yeah. I never thought it would be a thing. Well, it's time consuming, you know, for like, for like one clip, if you're filming, you know, uh, yeah. it's, it's work. That's for sure. And, and you got to think too, though, like with, you know, with like you and I's era, like when you think winching, like one part of it's like, yeah, you know, finding some sort of ditch with a drop or whatever, some sort of like concrete slide, you know, a grindable, yeah. but then there's like you and I's generation of it is, oh yeah, we're going to set up these two pools in a parking lot with like a rail <laughs> in between, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which, which, you know, is pretty, uh, like I look back at it now and I'm like, man, that's so was, that was way more dangerous than any like trick, some, some of, wild trick. Yeah, that some I of did. the winching they're doing now isn't even dangerous compared to like the pool to pool setups that we had to do in the back of like a shop <laughs> yeah. in fucking Nebraska yes. or some shit like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm pretty sure a large amount of our almost the entire slideshow uh, we did, you know, was yeah. all was all winch. So, you know. I sit, I sit back and think about that stuff, you know, because at the time it like didn't didn't freak us out at all. Like, I mean, come on, you, you won't lie, though, Shane. One of the funnest ones of them all. And I'm not necessarily talking the setup, but we'll just say the uh, the entire event was you remember bowls, board shorts and bikinis because you are oh, a yes. former champion of that, too. Oh, I'm, I'm a I'm a double belt, oh, double belt buckle holder, and I did, and I won. I think it was uh, two years in a row. Yeah, that's so right. It was like, I, yeah, no, I I loved the bold board shorts and bikinis thing. Like, it was insane, and it was terrified and it was so cold I remember it was it was so cold I just I will will never forget Geiger you know I'd be talking to him like you know a week or two before the event oh yeah just we just get out there I'm like Geiger there's ice on the rail man nobody wants to wakeboard right now just get out there we got the bull riding thing started in about 15 minutes yeah he would always be like yeah Shane's gonna come back he's gonna be wearing the belt while he rides both on the bull and 
on my wakeboard. Uh, I love those bell buckles. I still have them. I think they're at my brother's house in our trophy case, but I still got them. Oh, for sure, man. Like they said, that was, uh, you know, as much as, as much as there wasn't so much a ton of wakeboarding, but the event was obviously a huge hit. You remember it was at Gillies at like the Dallas boat show. Yeah. I mean, and, and what other wakeboard contest has a, uh, animatronic bull riding contest <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly well I think I think what makes it even more like novelty was not only did we do that but remember I think they had like girls in bikinis like doing it too <laughs> yeah yeah that's definitely <laughs> so but, um, so where were we at I think but, we were talking yeah, about so, the, the trend so we got favorite or, favorite um, trend in wake which was yeah like you were saying trends. rewinds and like uh, and like yeah like what everybody's done with like tootsies now but I also want to I'm going to give you a little chance to get on that soapbox too so I want to know what your least favorite trend right now is I think least favorite trend is posting footage as soon as you get it yeah on Instagram because the kids the kids they just love the likes on the day but they don't realize that like there's you gotta build like you need to build a bigger thing you know you gotta build a bigger piece of art yeah. you don't, you don't want to just do an, a line drawing from some for somebody you want to give them a full a full Michelangelo piece like you gotta you gotta finish the whole thing and the idea that just the trick can just live for a day and then you forget about it is I think that is my least favorite trend like I hate just just as soon as we're done filming it's like hey do you mind if I post the you know the whatever like right the, that back pin that I just landed and I'm like, well, we're filming for a section right now. So hey, no. instant gratification. Right. If all these kids had a Nokia 5150 that they played snake on, they'd probably have a little bit different outlook on the whole thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's, but I mean, it's just the way the world's moving. I mean, they, they, everybody wants, wants content and they want it now so they can scroll right past it, double tap it and then scroll. Hey, well, you know what? That's why we got your role at liquid force you know to create the true bit of art and uh you know for all of us that appreciate especially these uh these full length parts so you know well i appreciate it i really like what i'm doing now and i'm stoked i'm stoked that this is what i get to do likewise man well so with with yeah like like we were talking about that since we found a couple of like items that you know that you're really like in wake right now like those tootsies so what riders are ones that you're pretty hyped on and i i know we're gonna go ahead and say for sure Finn and Sam um, because you've spent a lot of time filming them uh, but yeah just like what what writers kind of you know like man are you really pumped up uh, about these days um, I mean there's 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 a lot of r- really good writers out there like um, I love what Mossy's doing I love what Tyler I am doing and I love like there's there's just a lot of I feel like there's a lot of good writers out there putting their own take on it like not everybody's just doing whatever they can right behind the boat like I feel like there's a lot of like Luca I think Luca is like he's one of my more favorite people to film and be around with when we're at a liquid shoot just cause he's so insane like, he's, he's definitely doing his own thing man that's for sure yeah but he's actually insane like he's he's a crazy little he's a crazy kid <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I love it uh, what like a weapon outburst and just like just whenever he like freaks out or like <laughs> yes. gets mad it's like some of the funniest shit in the world like <laughs> Sure. Yeah, For I know. Sure, if I, I know if I was his age or around that like twenty twenty some like little group right there, like I would I would be hanging out with them a lot. Right. Man. And obviously, like I mean, I film and watch and like do a lot of stuff with all the liquid guys, and everybody's got their own like little moves. Like I love filming Nico and Felix whenever they're vibing and they're doing their own thing. I love filming Gunther. But right. I wish I like it would be nice if I could get out and film other other stuff a little bit more. But so so wrapped up and doing hey. so much stuff with liquid that I get it, though, man. Keep going. You know, it's just like just like we've been talking about those who is pieces, though. You know, you dedicate your time into one thing like that. And look what the uh, the end product comes out as. It's pretty, yeah. pretty amazing. So um, even just doing when we did the LFG, like I didn't realize some of those girls shred so hard. Like they're they're amazing. Like the 
like Claudia and Marie and like Elena, like some of these girls and Sane, like they're all so good. Like I didn't even realize a lot of these writers. And that's what happens whenever you're just sort of stuck filming whoever and like just working on the computer that you you're not traveling around getting to see everybody ride in all the contests and stuff. So. Right. And like half of those girls, man, it gives you even more like respect for them because they have like half the season that we do. So uh, yeah. even, even more impressive, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that too though. So, but uh, man, I think, I think you'll like this part too. So, so we got another little segment that we're doing. It's, it's back in the day with Tom Fouché. So, and I actually got two that I'm going to drop on you. One of them, one of them like resonates with me, like, forever um pretty 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 personal but the first one the first one i'm going to start with is a pretty good funny story man because this one i don't know why anytime uh anytime like your name comes up with somebody i always want to tell this story whether i do or don't but i will never forget it was like one of the like the resurrected years of uh of trip across America and you and I are cruising through New Jersey. And I remember we were oh, on the yeah. highway. I know you already know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. So, so I remember we were, uh, we were, we were cruising on the highway and I can't remember, and this is where I need your help. I was bringing this up, but like you, you brought up Jersey rules and I can't remember how it came up, but you, you were wanting to tell me about like what Jersey rules were. And, yeah. and I'm going to let you take this over right here. Cause this is where I'm drawing a little bit of a, <laughs> a little I, bit forget, of a I forget who actually told me but the premise of it was is like whenever you're playing like a like a house game and you're playing pool or you're playing ping pong and like the rules change when you're playing like you don't like they're like nope you can't double hit that or you can't you know yeah. you can't you, you got to do this no no like when the rules change while you're playing that's a jersey rule and it was like a buddy of mine that came up with it he's like no jersey rules dude like we're playing the way we know how to play like you can't just make shit up and anytime you just randomly call some stuff out it's jersey rules and i remember being stuck on that too because and it just sounds bad like anytime somebody accuses you of jersey rules you want to back (laughs) out you're like okay my bad i I must have messed up i don't want to be associated with jersey right now for sure and and I, i remember it was like during the middle of the day, like we were in the car or something, you're like, tell me about this, you know? And then sure enough, like that night, you know, we go or whatever that afternoon we did, we did a demo, like stoked out a bunch of people wakeboarding, you know, and, and got them on our gear. And then, and then they threw a party at the, at the, the shop there, the local like dealership. And which was, yeah. which was an, an awesome rager, by the way, like, hell yeah, fun. I remember <laughs> that they were like, it started out like, we're going to have some beers and I think take some photos in front of this, like with, within the store, like, they had like mm-hmm. a half studio sort of style set up and I think they had like a ping pong or a pool table or something else going on but I mean it turned into an absolute rage yes absolutely and, and to even like go plant, in like unpotted plants and broken <laughs> stuff like there was things getting thrown around TVs were broken oh like, yeah it, like, it, it, it got it got out of control but it got turned was, up <laughs> Yeah, it got turned up, but I remember we were playing and Jersey Rules unfolded. I think it was like a ping pong game and they're like, no, 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 you can't serve from that side of the table. And we're like, we've been serving from this side of the table the whole time. And now you go and you pull some Jersey Rules while we're in New Jersey. And I was like, y'all are so, this is fucking Jersey Rules for sure. Oh, it was, it was just so funny because like literally you were, you were talking about that like, you know, that day and then sure enough, it got pulled out. And at the same time too, I think what makes this like hit even harder is that this was like during the height of the whole Jersey shore thing. And we were in, we were at the Jersey shore, you know, like when all this happened and then sure enough, what's even, what even made the whole thing like full circle was, do you remember the, the the icing on the cake, right? Yes. Yes. We met the Guidos. It was a family with the last name Guidos. And it was like, they they were full on Italian. Like everything (laughs) was like spot on. That was so insane. (laughs) Like, I think I remember laughing like for like 30 minutes straight right after that. I was like, these are Jersey rules. You guys are just a bunch of fucking Jersey fools. Like, y'all don't even know. Screaming at them. And then they like came up and they're like, 
I even probably, being as drunk as I was, probably called them all Guidos. <laughs> yeah, like, right. They were like, no, they're the Guidos. And we're like, y'all are all Guidos. And they were like, no, no, we are Guidos. And they showed us their ID and their last name was Guido. And I was like, how could you be any more Jersey? Like, you... <laughs> Your last name is Guido, and you live in Jersey, and you're making up Jersey rules. Yes. I was like, this is the worst scenario ever for it. Like, oh, it was, was so funny. It was like, it was everything. And then the, the funny thing was, I think you, uh, I think you might even have been on this text, but I, Jeff Langley sent me a picture with them last year. Like, he was up there in oh. New Jersey, and I got a text. He's like, do you know who I'm with? And he sent a picture. Uh, of the with Guido ID. Yeah. yeah. No, exactly. you know what? What's funny is, I mean, that was like probably like 10 years ago or whatever it was, Tom, that we did that. Like four or five years later, I met, I met, I think the brother, because there was a brother and a sister, I I forget which one I met, but I met him somewhere and they're like, we've met before. And I was like, "Ah, I'm I'm not good with faces, but I feel like I should know you guys. Like, what is like, they're like, no, 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 we've met before. We're at like this like Jersey thing. And I was like, (laughs) I don't know. And they're like, we're the Guidos. Oh, and I was like, man. oh, yes, yes, I definitely <laughs> like, how could I forget? <laughs> I was like, how could I? I'm so sorry I forgot. Like, <laughs> Oh man, I just that it would just it, it couldn't have been any more like coincidental like that you were telling it about the Jersey that, store. Oh, Jersey I'm so rules. glad that you pulled that up, Tom. That is a great one. Oh like, man, it's and how much and just how wrecked that like, yes. board shop got. Like we were in the board shop and there was like literally like potted plants that were like broken, dirt everywhere. Yes. Like I want to say there's like a broken TV or a stereo. Like it got it got out of hand. Yeah, it did, man. But it was. It was it was epic, and like I said, man, the the whole the whole Jersey thing just was like icing on the cake. It was so good. But oh, it was the best. I gotta I gotta bring up another one though, another back in the day that is like a little bit more personal, and I bet a lot of people probably don't know about this, which I think makes it even better. Well, makes the story even better. But like, I would say in the height, literally in the height of my wakeboarding prime, right? We had the event cable stock, whatever that we had at TSR, like my home park, right? So you think like I'm in the height, best, best like riding of my entire career, you know? And I will never forget like literally the last seconds of features only, which is like the main event of the entire thing. The last thing before whatever big music act that they had go on and seeing you do this, like switch nine off this kicker t- on the buzzard beater, like landing on Gabe's Gabe Lucas's yep. head for the victory. And a lot of people don't know that man. Like it's yeah, I'm gonna give it props. Was, like I, I, I mean, I'm not trying to hype myself up, a bunch, me too. but it was like, man, best Best, you know, best I've been riding in my entire career at the time. I'm at my home park, which is a massive advantage over anybody. And then you came out and, and rightfully earned that too, which like, yeah. I don't, no, I don't there, know if there, people understood. That was a moment for How, me too, like, because I remember, I think I was like at the, I probably was like 30, like late, like late twenties or whatever. But I remember thinking almost a lot of the time that I was like, man, I'm getting, I'm so much older than half of the crew that I'm riding against. And like, I just remember not, not like placing or not being able to do as good as I wanted in contests a lot. Mm -hmm. And like, while we're there, that was a big, that was like one of the bigger relevance of the year too, because just there was so many like heavy hitters there. Like it was your part. There's Gabe. There's a lot of people at the time. Like, yeah. And a lot of people came to that event. Yeah. Yeah. And, and whether it was like, whether it was like worldly known or whatever, but like, if you could win that, that means that you definitely are in like the top, you know, top echelon of like uh, some rail riding, riding sure. and park riding. And I remember, yeah, like, I know Gabe fell right in front of me. He was like in the carrier in front of me. And I remember cutting in and I was like, this is last lap right now. I'm not gonna like just pass this kicker I'm, I'm mm-hmm. hitting it and Gabe is in the water and I remember edging in and yelling I was like heads up and I did like 
as I'm coming around from seven to nine, like I see him in the water, like probably, like, you know, 10 feet in front of me and he just ducks and it's where he ducked is where I like landed. Like the splash of his helmet going underwater is where I landed and like rode over top of him. I was like, are you okay? And like, he was fine. Oh, but it was the, perfect. The mo- the, the, bolts, where, man. But when I realized that like, I actually beat you on your own cable, I was like, I can still do this. Like I can hang with these guys. Like I look at like, I just proved it. Like I can do this. And it like gave me a lot of like esteem right there. I was like, it was, it was one of my favorite wins. And like one of those moments where I was like, if I can beat the king of the cable at his own cable, (laughs) then, then you you haven't lost it yet, kid. No, 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 absolutely not, man. It it resonated. It resonated pretty heavy with me. Cause like I said, I saw that last trick at the very end. And I I mean, I, I kind of knew it then too. I was like, man, you know, Shane, Shane's on one, Shane's on one. So yeah, I, without that was a, doubt. a good year of riding. I remember that I had a good year of riding that year. Like uh, I was on and I was feeling it that year. For sure, man. Yeah, and I, like I said, I don't, I don't know if a lot of people know about that, but yeah, like during the during the 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 height of my time, and I would say in philosophy, like probably like cable at its highest time too. You know, it was, uh, and that was kind of like the event to go to. So you know, yeah. you, you definitely pulled, you definitely pulled a, a one out when it mattered the most too. So uh, definitely one I would like to I'm share glad with you everybody. That up. If you were going to ask me about one a, a scenario with me and you, I would have said the time I beat you on your own cable so for I'm sure glad we're both and Jersey both rules realized that, that was a big moment and Jersey rules and Jersey rules <laughs> like, I forgot I wouldn't have remembered Jersey rules until you brought it up like oh, I, I mean I, I could I could remember it if we were talking about New Jersey or something like that like if you mentioned Jersey Joe <laughs> then I would have been like, oh my God, do you remember when we met the Guidos in New <laughs> yeah. Jersey? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, this is too good, too good. So I want to fast forward back into uh, into Wake, man. So like we'll just uh, into modern day. So I, I'm just curious because, man, obviously not only are you still in Orlando in the Mecca, but like who you're filming and everybody at this these days. Where where do you see like what's the next step for Wake? And, and when I say Wake, man, like it can be Wakeboard, Wake Foil, uh, what, whatever it is. I mean, more so, you know, obviously Wakeboard is is uh, you and I's main focus. But what, what, what do you think the next step and and where it's headed. <laughs> I mean, it's tough. Uh, there's there's a lot of avenues, and it's there's only more avenues the more people are doing it. But I think as uh, terrible and as shitty as COVID has been this year, it got so many people out on the boat and sort of nice. maybe even like just sort of reignited a little bit of you know fire in their hearts. And like I think it it broadened a lot of people's eyes that it's like maybe it's you know maybe doing something that I used to do years ago or getting out on the boat with my friends is right. a big a, a bigger thing in my life that I didn't realize it was so big so I think out of every all of the bad stuff that came out of it that's one of the good ones is that For I think sure. more people more people appreciate the the wake wake lifestyle so um, I agree man you know obviously I mean kind of the whole reason why anybody why we why we got into it and why everybody else does you know being being outside and find an act is something that's a lot of fun to do and to progress so I'm with you on that man I, I mean it, it, just like you said as shitty as the whole COVID thing's been, been I mean it, it puts some limelight yeah. on uh, on us so hopefully uh hopefully we can keep that energy going you know with uh yeah. with with the wake thing but you know with but along with like just where the sport and where all of that stuff's going like um i don't know i'd say i say people need to uh speed the boat back up and stop yes. wake surfing and get back get back behind the boat a little bit further <laughs> let the rope out and speed that thing up and start hitting the wake some more yeah hey man there's i i think people realize there's a lot you can do with it i mean like check out check i mean speaking of that like I was pretty impressed by that. The, I'm going to go ahead. Since and I don't actually, not to cut you off, but since I don't have a boat sponsor anymore, I would like to say, calm, you boat companies need to calm the fuck down, man. Y'all's boats and y'all's wakes are getting out of hand. <laughs> Let's bring back some, 
<laughs> Just bring back some old school sport on tape, some 2001s, <laughs> like whatever. Like we need to like make some wakes that normal people can jump. Because now that I'm getting old, I don't even want like I love a G23, but empty those bags and <laughs> don't don't let me. I can't even hit that big ass wake. Leave that for the pros and keep a few boats around for those dudes. But make right. some wakes that the most of us can jump. Well, oh, dude, I, I hear you, man. I hear you. I'm uh, I'm getting up there myself, so you know, Amen, brother. <laughs> oh, that, it hurts, dude. I can take, if I take a wake set right now, my back is cracked. <laughs> oh, oh man, it, it it only it only gets worse. <laughs> yeah. But, well, so that's where. So I get I get that's where you're where you see everything's headed, and you know what happened this year. But what's in store next for Shane? What's the future of Shane? Obviously, um, I know uh, I he's going to have a I mean, ring I, on his I finger. I like what I'm doing right now. I mean, I really enjoy it. And, I mean, if if I can keep doing this, I want to keep doing this. I love filming and being part of the sport. Still lending my, you know, little talents here and there. I mean, I'm still riding for Jet Pilot. We got... Yeah. Which uh, I think everybody, anybody that remembers will be super stoked for. But we've got the baller vest coming out next year. Yeah. Which is a remake after probably like 22 years, maybe 20 plus years or whatever. But we've got the bringing back out the baller vest, which I'm super, super stoked about. Did you do the NBA finalist colors on purpose? No, we didn't even know. We shot that like weeks. We shot that like before the like probably while the season was happening, but we didn't even know. And we picked we picked uh, the Lakers and Miami and the Jazz. So. Man, if if that couldn't have been well, at least with the Lakers thing, man, that, if that couldn't have been meant to be, I mean, dude, yeah. it was crazy. Well, that's why we teased it. I don't know if you saw that we teased it on yep. Instagram, like, but like we had to tease it because we were like, Jesus, like, how? What are the odds that we only do three vests? And two of the teams are in the finals. For right, I mean, it's pretty pretty damn impressive, man. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again. I've been saying it this entire time. Trend setter. <laughs> oh, dude, I know, I know. People, it's just a matter of people not getting on my trends nowadays, you know. For sure, man. For sure. Well, they're like they sleep on them, and then it goes past, and they're like, "Oh wait, that was cool." And they're like, "Well, Shane was doing that shit like five years ago. Yeah, the shit's old now." Where were you? <laughs> Yeah. I would say that's pretty much a story a story of everybody's life, man. You should you gotta give respect to what Shane's done because, I mean, in, in full honesty, man, I look back at it like your entire career, like it it was literally everything from from obviously you've you've won contests, you've done tricks that nobody's done, both off the double up, off the wake. You were the guy that that brought uh, the nose press to wakeboarding. I mean, trend setted with all these different products, you know, from wake pants to closed toe bindings to all these different graphics on board. I mean, it's like, what has Shane not done? Filmed video, filmed video parts, both in front and behind the lens. And of course now, um, I think you found your niche, man. It, Cause, uh, we, everybody, we, we love your form of art that you're doing right now, man. So, uh, if, if anything, the, the one bit of thing I can say that we would all love to hear from you is as far as what's in store for Shane in the future is to continue to keep producing what you've been doing, man, over the last two, three years has been nothing short of word. Thank you. Dude, thank you so much, man. I, I appreciate that. That was uh, some real kind words. Hey man, speaking, speaking from the heart. So, but you know, uh, I, with that right before we, we end this whole thing though, man, I do want to bring back the, let the truth be told. Let the truth, truth, be, be, truth be told. 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 Now let's hear both, both sides of the story. I want you to give us a nice, juicy story about our next guest that will be on the following episode, Sean Watson, man. You guys have been teammates yeah. on Liquid Force as and long you, as anybody. I mean, there, there's a lot. Of like, course. I mean, it's, it's weird. Like, I've known Watson. Me and Watson have been teammates and traveling the world together for a really long time. So there's, I mean, there's so many stories that I don't, like, I... <laughs> It's 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 hard to pick one, right? But like I I'm the one I'm picking right now is the one like I think he'll be most mad that I brought up, 
and not, totally not because it's for. embarrassing not because it's like super embarrassing but just like he's going to say that I didn't make him cry <laughs> yes. because I did I did make him cry oh, I made him man. cry on camera actually oh. and not, weep, not weep tears but he shed tears so what it was is he we were filming um <laughs> He was filming his first hand back when Fuel yeah. TV was around. And he was doing, we were in New Zealand or Australia or something, and we're like hanging out, we're doing something. And he's doing like, I think we're going out surfing or just came in from surfing. And he's like looking at the camera and he's doing this whole like, hey, what's up? We just got done surfing. We're getting back in the van. We're going to go do this, you know, like giving his full little thing. And I take a coin out of my pocket and I, and I like go to just like distract him or I went to hit him in the face is what I was doing <laughs> but like in Australia I, they have like these big old coins like a big old heavy coin oh yeah the one and two dollar yeah and I threw it and I hit him directly in like the bridge of the nose like <laughs> right there in between the eyes like on the bridge and it wasn't even that I threw it hard but it like made like such a perfect connection with his nose like that it, he just started like tearing up and leaking tears and like and he's like oh and he gets super pissed cause I just like it was a great take like and now he has to stop and redo it and he has to redo it <laughs> But, and then, like, so I did that, and he, like, it hits him, and he gets super mad, and then he runs at me to try to punch me, and I have a big belt buckle on, too, so I, like, turn, and he, like, hits his knuckles on my belt buckle and scrapes, like, the knuckles off of, like, the skin off of his knuckles, so his knuckles are bleeding, (laughs) he's, like, teared up, and he even is, like, bleeding a little bit from the nose, and I'm, like, untouched. You beat him up without even laying a finger on him. (laughs) Yeah, it was. It, it was like I mean it was a dick move it was yeah. bad it was a mean it was a mean move like I w- if it was me getting filmed and Watson did that to me I would have like just been super pissed off. <laughs> right. I'm sure that is but uh, I mean he'll probably say <laughs> that he didn't cry during that but I definitely got a few tears out of him well you'll definitely but make- needless to say there was so many of Watson like stuff like I it's it's even hard to run through like I I love that dude I've known him for so long like Pointless Boys from back in the day and he was like the one of the few Pointless dudes that like he lived down in South Florida so he didn't get to come up here and ride with us all the time but every time we were at an event he was always there always part of the crew and just that like me and him like got to run the team at yeah. Liquid Force forever like dude, from the moment like we yeah like but I even remember like we did a trip to Australia and Watson was always driving and I was always in the passenger seat and no there's like seven other riders on the trip you know like mm-hmm. Hinshaw and like whoever and all of these people nobody would touch our seats like they knew we like <laughs> we were driving that car and they were just passengers in it. Right. and the fact that like and because of both of our like success in different ways like Watson being like the super styly cool guy and me being like this is some trick you know like whatever character like me and him both like embodied liquid force and like re- held it together for so long that I would never ask for a different partner to be part of something for as long as me and him have got to do this and it's it's really cool like 20 plus years and me and him are still colleagues doing the same stuff he's team managing I'm filming Man, and, couldn't, couldn't, uh, yeah. couldn't be said any better. And not to mention that, like, that's the perfect story we're looking at. Cause obviously I want to get his take on it before I even like tell him your side of it. So, uh, man, well, well yeah. done there, man. Well done. And, and yeah. perfect way um, to close out today. Yeah. No, that was good. Where, where's the, there's this other, what was the, the other one? I, I had another story. I was about Actually, to say about I was going to ask you that belt buckle that he, uh, cut his, cut his hand on. Was that a, was that a, uh, Board shorts, bulls, and bikinis, belt buckle. Uh, I would like to think so, but no, I didn't fashionably wear this around. But it was a big one. That was like in the era of like wearing stupid big belt buckles or whatever. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, I mean, so was so was board shorts, bulls, and bikinis. You know, that's that's why it seems like it could have been. That. Oh, 
<laughs> so. I had another story. I had another Watson story on the tip of my tongue that I can't think of right now. Oh, the, this one. This one's good. I'll try to keep it quick. But it's it's where he got the name Buttons from. <laughs> yes. And, I think I might have heard this. <laughs> and uh, we're we're in Australia. A different trip than the ones that we're actually talking about. I was just previously talking about, but Watson would be driving with his phone using like GPS, following that, changing the radio station, and he had his iPad out that we were playing Tiger Woods golf on, and he'd have all of these things going, and he was so distracted that like we were following Daniel Watkins. This is during Defy, I think. Yeah. And we're following Daniel Watkins in another white van. <clears throat> so this white van's in front of us, and he's like playing, changing music, talking on the phone, listening to directions, driving everything, and so. Somehow or another, another white van gets in front of us that looks identical <laughs> to this white van. So we followed this white van totally home. Like we followed this van off of the interstate 10 miles oh into their neighborhood. We follow them all the way to their house, pull up and like pull in front of the driveway right behind them. Oh and no. they get out of the car and we look at them we're like, that's not Daniel Watkins. <laughs> <laughs> like, so we have been following strangers that are probably terrified and didn't even right. go home. Like it was the weirdest thing. We're like, and never once did we ever question it until somebody got out of the van. And we're right. like, I wonder how long. And we're like, we got off of the interstate like a long time ago <laughs> and we weren't supposed to get off of it. So it was like, I love that one because that was buttons. Like, and how much he just loves to touch <laughs> the buttons on his phone. I, that almost sounds a little bit dumb and dumber ass. Like you, you went 40 miles in the, in the wrong direction. You know, the Rockies look a little bit more rocky than this. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was <laughs> Bad. And we actually put diesel. We put the wrong gas in our van because all of vans are like diesel in right. Australia, and we yep. put normal gas in there. I oh, think no. twice. Oh no, twice. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch, man. Well, I can't. I can't wait to hear uh, hear Watson's take on. Uh, I really, on the I really hope one. he says that I didn't make him cry because I <laughs> yeah. did. Uh, man, we always say there's 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 video footage, you know, if we to really let the truth be told. But yeah, man, I I'm pretty I'm pretty pretty pumped to hear what Watson's take is on it for sure. Yeah. So, but Dan Shane, but, I, but let him know I do love him because uh, you know oh, I don't want doubt. him to think I'm uh, yeah I, I, I love that uh, old blonde Watson. Oh, for sure, man. I like I said, I think you hit it. Pretty and he's well. a new daddy too. <laughs> right. He, right. He's got to be so confused. I bet he like is, like jealous that he just isn't getting touch buttons as much anymore it's just like taking care of babies and he's like He's got, he's got something else to, to fill his time now. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, man, Shane, I can't thank you enough for uh, for being a part of this and and giving us time, man. Like too too much fun uh, getting to catch up with you, man. And uh, anytime that jersey jersey rules story can come out, man, please let it. <laughs> uh, dude, Tom, thank you, thank you for the kind words, man. You're you're awesome, and I'm so glad that we're doing this uh, drop talk podcast, dude. I can't wait to hear more. Rock on. On, brother well uh hey thanks again man you, you keep on keeping on because it's kicking ass cool man thank you so much take care shane and that's gonna do it for episode two of the liquid force drop talk podcast episode three sean watson man this guy has been everywhere and has probably got more stories than anybody to share with us so gonna be a super fun entertaining one so make sure you download episode three we out we out